Hello and welcome to another chemistry YouTube video. Today we're going to look at predicting molecular formulas and these are all going to be ionic compounds and also looking at how we calculate the molar mass for these. So I've got four examples that I'm going to run through and again they're all ionic compounds some of them involve polyatomic ions those are the ones that need to be memorized and other ones I have one here that's just chlorine so we can predict that based on looking at the periodic table alright so my first one is barium and hydroxide first thing you need to do is know how to predict the charge on barium Oops. So if I look at my handy dandy periodic table I see that barium is in group 2 that means it's going to have a 2 plus charge So I'll write out the symbol barium 2 plus and then remember hydroxide is one of your polyatomics that you memorize and that is OH and has a 1 minus charge. And then when we put these together in a, in a compound we're going to draw our arrows and switch the superscripts and the 1 will go with the barium and then the 2 will go with the hydroxide. So it should be BA and then parentheses OH2 and again I have to use parentheses because this is a polyatomic ion and there are multiple multiple ions so it's two ions in this case they go with the one barium alright so that's the formula and then if I was going to name this it would just be barium hydroxide So you may be asked to predict the formula based on two elements or two, an element in a polyatomic ion, and then you have to name it, barium hydroxide, write out the chemical symbol, and then additionally, let's look at the molar mass. So the molar mass is where the periodic table is going to come in handy, and those numbers underneath the chemical symbol will come in handy. And we see that these number for barium, well, let me bring it up here try to refocus this thing there we go so the number for barium is 137.33 and remember that's an average of all of the isotopes of barium so this is actually called the molar mass of barium it's 137.33 grams per mole and then we look at the other two elements involved oxygen is 16 and then hydrogen way up here it's about one. So what I have to do is figure out how many of each I have. I have one barium and one barium comes in at 137.33. Then I'm going to add to that two oxygens. This two here tells me that I can distribute it to the everything that's inside the parentheses and oxygen is here. Since the subscript on oxygen, there is no subscript, it's just one. So I go two times one, which is two. So there's two oxygens in this compound. And the oxygen has a molar mass of 16 and then I'm gonna to add to that two hydrogens. And when you add all that together, you end up with 171.33 grams per mole. Remember to always put units. We need to always have units, no naked numbers. Okay, so that's barium hydroxide. Let's do another one, chromium nitrate. And this is chromium-3. Remember this chromium, uh, or, or this is a transition metal, and this 3 refers to the charge on chromium. The symbol for chromium is Cr, and the charge is 3, so we don't even need the periodic table for that. We also don't need the periodic table for this because this is a polyatomic ion that you have memorized. And so the charge is minus one for this. You can do the same thing like we did for the barium hydroxide. And we see that chromium gets the one and then we need parentheses for the nitrate. I'm gonna put the three down there. So this is how you come up with the formula from the 
elements and the ions. And then when we name it, again, it's pretty simple, chromium-3 nitrate. All right, so now on to the molar mass of this one. I won't show the periodic table every time, so I wanted to zoom every time, but remember that we can use the periodic table. We find chromium, and chromium has a molar mass of 52. So 52 grams per mole. And then now we look at inside the parentheses. Remember this three is distributed to everything inside. So let's start with the nitrogen. We have three nitrogens and each nitrogen is 14. It's actually 14.01. <clears throat> so we multiply three times 14.01 because again this three is distributed to the nitrogens inside. And then the oxygen there are nine oxygens, three times three here. So we go nine times 16. This is gonna be 42.03, and then this will be 144. So we take, we add all these numbers together. We add the 52 from chromium, 42.03 from the three nitrogens, and the 144 from the nine oxygens. And then when you do that, you should get 238 grams per mole. All right, let's do a couple more. Calcium and chlorine. Again, going back to my periodic table, I now need it again because I have to predict the charge. Calcium is not a transition metal. It's in group two. It's an alkaline earth metal. So it's going to have a charge of plus two because it's in group two. Chlorine, way over here, is in group 17. Remember, it only needs one electron to become stable, like argon, so it has a charge of minus one. Calcium 2 plus, Cl minus. Draw our arrows, and we end up <clears throat> with calcium getting the one and Cl getting the two. Okay. And to name this one, all we're going to do is drop the suffix from the chlorine and make it chloride. So we drop the I and E and turn it into IDE, calcium chloride. For the molar mass, same idea for this one. Calcium has a molar mass of 40.08 when I look at the periodic table. And then I have chlorine. There are two of them. Two. and each one has 35.45 grams per mole. And then when I add this together, so this should be 70.90. And then again, this is 40.08. When I add these two together, I should get 110.98. Oops off the screen there, grams per mole. All right, one last one. This will be the one with the most numbers in it. <clears throat> okay, magnesium, not a transition metal. So let's look and find magnesium. It's right there, so it is in group two. It will come in with a two plus charge. Phosphate is a polyatomic ion. So that one, you already know the charge, which is 3 minus, PO4, 3 minus. And then we do our flip-flop here. Put our 3 with the magnesium, and then our 2 with the phosphate. So it's MG3PO4. And then the name, very simple, magnesium phosphate. We don't need Roman numerals because it is not a transition metal. All right, so let's look at how many of each element we have. We have three magnesiums here because we have a subscript of three under the magnesium. 
and each magnesium comes in at 24.31. We have three of them. <clears throat> and then we have two phosphates, or sorry, two phosphoruses. So this two distributes to that P. P comes in at 30.97. When I look at the periodic table, and I'm going to multiply that times 2. I'll just put 3 and 2 here. And then I take 4 times 2, which is 8. That's the oxygens. Each oxygen is 16. I'm going to multiply it by 8. This gives me 72.93 for the magnesium. And then for the phosphorus, it's going to be 61.94. And then 128 for the oxygens. Add all these up, and you end up with 262.87. grams per mole. Okay, well, I hope that was helpful and uh, more videos to come on upcoming topics.